So when did this big trend start a while back of people saying, hey, we don't need to do any direct arm work to have big arms? Um, I thought I would sit down and chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this because it's something that's come up in a you know recent video I made discussing why we need direct arm work and that I'm evidence that we need it uh, because again my arms didn't get particularly good for years and years while I was not prioritizing it and focusing on powerlifting. So when I make this statement I want to be clear when my original channel came out in 2012 I literally took one of those minimalist programs of no arm work and put arm work in it. Like I made that video putting that out when I had 25 followers. I had 25 followers at that time. Um, and it was essentially me taking more or less strong lifts as a basic template, which was just five barbell lifts and adding extra supplemental work, bicep work and tricep work to it, right? In addition to some lower back work and hamstring work, other stuff. Again, adding a little bit to it, um, it got published in some, some pretty big places uh, and it kind of took off, right? It kind of took off. Uh, so I want to be clear, I did not even start with that stance, but what had happened if you go back in time, and I've been around long enough to remember this, about 15, maybe maybe 20 years ago, I, it could be as far back as 20 years, we started seeing some of the, the big websites like T Nation, some of the writers there, they were also still, magazines were still on the shelf back then. You know, in spite of the fact that a lot of bodybuilding routines had four or five different types of curls in them, and you know, you saw all your pro bodybuilders doing, you know, multiple types of curls, we also had writers coming out with some minimalist stuff. There were a lot of, of writers for these, these publications and websites who were saying, no, 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 you, you don't have to do arm work, okay? Pull-ups, chin-ups, bench pressing, close grip bench pressing, battle build biceps and triceps, you know? Uh, you get really good at weighted dips and, and weighted chin-ups and pull-ups and you'll have, you know, massive arms. Like, I've never seen anyone who can do, you know, whatever weight they would talk about. Uh, you know, 100 pounds for 10 reps on a weighted chin up or a pull up who doesn't have big biceps, you know. Look at gymnasts, like this, all the stuff they would refer to. You know, as if, as if being a gymnast is an efficient way to, uh, to build big arms, you know. Hey, you could do some curls or you could work on the rings for 10 hours a day. <laughs> you know, it's, again, it's like that's an efficient solution. Uh, but you saw this stuff. And it was a whole divergence coming away from the other end. And keep in mind, even your minimalist and heavy duty guys were not saying that. So when anyone tries to refer it over to, to that being responsible, the, the hit Jedis were absolutely not responsible because Menger did curls. Like, there's plenty of pictures of Mike Menger doing barbell curls. Okay, we need to be clear with that. In fact, he appeared to be, from what I could tell, if we look at enough pictures and books, he was a big advocate of the straight bar curl. He just seemed to do a lot of that. Uh, you know, Dorian Yates, even with his more minimalism and hit, he still did a couple types of curls, several types of curls every week. So you can't blame those people, but what we saw, we saw all these articles. And I even looked back and I kind of later said, as I saw more stuff coming out, um, and the rip toe stuff and everything else and uh, starting strength, I kind of said, well, look, I mean, I had pretty big arms in my 20s and I didn't do a lot of curls, but it was stuff like I still did curls, okay? I still did preacher curls. I did dumbbell curls. I really liked hammer curls a lot back then. Um, I remember that when I was at my biggest when I was younger. I, I liked hammer curls quite a bit. Um, and I still did a lot of press down. So I, was, I would always say, well, I got really good at closing grip benches and dips, but I still did some press downs every week. Um, I, I really liked press downs back then. And I, but I didn't do 20 sets of them, and that was the difference I kind of brought up to people. Uh, you know, I'm like, I, I didn't do endless numbers. I didn't come in and do 15 or 20 sets of, of triceps. You know, it was, you know, do some closing grip bench or weighted dips or whatever after benching, and, uh, you know, three or four sets of, of press downs to failure. Right? And it worked great. But keep in mind, I was also moving some big weight on those lifts. You know, then we come around full circle. You know, even I got a bit influenced by a lot of these starting strength guys and then the saying, look, do we care about biceps that much? Just, just do some chin-ups. Just do some chin-ups. But realistically, even when I went through that phase and I got pretty good at weighted chin-ups, 
I mean, I was over 200 pounds and able to do a 100 pound chin, right? You guys remember that? Right, weighing like 230 or something, I was able to do a 100 pound chin up. But my biceps are bigger now, now that I'm doing curls. So when people look at this, you have to understand there was this big push by a lot of people. I remember even certain books saying, oh, you don't need any delt work. We don't need laterals. You don't need any of that stuff if you just do plenty of benching and rows. And you can still find those articles. They're still out there floating around on the Internet. But the interesting thing, a lot of the coaches promoting that and writing those things, you're like, Where, where's your photos of your big delts? You don't really see them, do you? And it's not to say we can't build pretty good delts off those things and just throwing a few laterals in. You know, my client Doug had pretty good delts, doing a lot of inclines, pull-ups, rows, but we still did a little laterals. All right? We still did some. But the same thing with, with the arm stuff. You know, let's be realistic here. That was a movement. But the thing is, did any of those people really get results? And I even said back, you know, I knew some guys who had big arms who didn't really do much in the way of those. But you've got to say, what about genetics? How much did they weigh? You know, they weren't always lean either. They're usually sometimes some fatter guys. And they did throw a lot of big weight around. But they still did a little bit of curls and stuff. But, you know, you take that middle of the road philosophy I have, and I was chasing purely strength of saying, look, um, you know, we don't need to do a lot of these. We should probably do a little bit. Then I've come around and said, you know, I think I had it right originally. My original content that I was putting out, I'm like, no, even novices should probably do some curls. If they want big arms, yes, squat, bench, deadlift, rows, all that stuff are great. We should be doing those. You probably want to do some curls, right? At least once or twice a week, even for novices, if you want big arms. Now, as you get more advanced, the thing I'm saying, and, and I agree with, if you want big arms, you probably do need to do a lot of curls and extensions. You need to work the angles that are not getting worked on the big compound movements. If you don't, unless you're just really gifted in the arm department, they are going to lag. That is what's going to happen, okay? So it needs to be done. And, and that's where I'm going to disagree with the people like Ripto and all that, who put on all that stuff. You know, oh, we're going to do curls and... Here's the thing. You do. And it's not like anyone coming out of starting strength has great physiques. He put out amazing information for novice lifters, which is what he catered to who just need to get generally strong. Okay? If you want a great physique, you're going to have to do curls. You're probably going to need to do a fair number of them. Right? It's like you see me doing in this video three completely different types of curls in the same day. Same thing with some extensions. If you want the long head of your tricep to go, you're going to need a lot more than closed grip bench press. You just simply are. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.